other one is. I get asked about hearing protection and communications all the time. It can be really confusing. So I set out to find something that worked, had radios, can be used with or without a helmet, and not require a loan to buy. Eventually I realized, holy crap, no wonder I get so many questions. This, this sucks. sucks. But I went through all the pain just for you, and here's what I found. I settled on Walker's FireMax ear protection and the FireMax walkie-talkie attachment. But don't leave. I'll explain why, how to mount it to your helmet, and how to actually use the radios. Stick around. This is going to be fun. First off, they they look good, very important. Black rubberized matte finish shells and headband, and they look pretty tactical. Bonus points that they're not reflective under night vision, and the LCD doesn't light up when transmitting or receiving. Opsec bro. The controls are easy enough with four differently shaped buttons over your left ear. You've got on off, audio mode, and ambient volume up and down. No Bluetooth on these. Everyday sounds are super amplified, very crisp, and they sound great. I usually keep mine at about four out of nine volume at the range. They advertise over a hundred hours of use on the Type C rechargeable lithium batteries and even less when using the walkie-talkie attachment. I wonder if people will like this video. I hope so. They do last the whole day at the range and then some. The earmuffs have a four hour auto shut off, but it seems when the walkie talkie is attached, they do not auto shut off. That's a pretty big fail. Five points from Gryffindor. Just in case, I keep a battery pack and cable in my range bag anyway, so not a huge deal. Comfort is a huge factor, especially during training when you're on the range all day. They adjust out to much larger than my head, so even you big brain bros can bang. I compared them to other sets of EarPro and my friend Pedro there, and the inward pressure looks similar. If I wear them for more than a few hours, I really start to feel the squeeze. They attempt to make it more comfortable by including cooling gel ear pads, but even then, my glasses get driven into my head. I ordered some sight lines from Noise Fighters, and they're so much softer overall, and they have a notch for your glasses and absolutely feel better. You do have to cut off the originals, but it's not hard. The Noise Fighters, however, are another $60 investment, but in my mind, mandatory. The price is $199, but they're constantly on sale, so don't pay more than $150 for these, which reminds me. Click the link in the description for coupon codes and links to every single thing in this video. Now let's get to gunfire. Yes, they work well. They have a noise reduction rating or NRR of 20 dB. And this is an area that's extremely difficult to find and often has conflicting data from all the companies that make EarPro and it's all confusing and I hate it and it's made up. So anyway, my ear no hurt when gun go bang and that's a positive. These, as most others on the market, have sound activated compression, which means once a loud noise goes off, the amplification is cut and you're left with the sound reduction of the muffs. The EarPro mics are omnidirectional, which is great for situations awareness and I could generally tell which direction sounds were coming from. Wind wreaks a bit of havoc, but they aren't the worst that I've tested. They still cut out during live fire even with strong sustained wind. On those days, I just turn down the ambient volume and I'm good to go. Lastly, I saw in the manual that these are IP54 rated, which is to do with moisture and water, so I waterboarded myself and they didn't die. Completely unrelated, I did have a set that were DOA out of the package and Walker replaced them ASAP. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. Now let's talk about communications because that's what really drew me in on these muffs. For an additional 50-ish bucks, you can add a FireMax walkie-talkie attachment. The mic portion of the walkie-talkie attachment is rigid and non-adjustable. So generally, I'm okay with that. I have a few sets of Walker Razor with walkies, and the mics are so weak and just scrawny like David Hogg. Anyway, easy to break is what I mean. So I'm okay with the FireMax and the increased girth. And now that we're both uncomfortable, let me teach you about the radios. These run on 22 separate shared FRS or Family Radio Service UHF frequencies. Basically, public frequencies designed for low power shorter range communications. Think hiking, off-roading, orgies, events, stuff like that. FRS or FRS devices is open for everyone and requires no license, whereas the higher power GMRS and ham radios require licenses from the government to transmit. You can receive or listen on Baofengs and other similar radios, but transmitting on FRS or GMRS on these radios is against FCC rules. I'm using them here, receiving only, to illustrate some of those ideas. Now the radio on the left is a Midland X-Talker and is sold as an FRS radio with the appropriate FCC neutering. So I may transmit and receive on FRS frequencies on that radio. I can easily use this to talk with the FireMax as long as they're on the same channel. The most basic operation is set your headsets to the same channel and talk away using the push to talk button on the mic. Keep in mind, FRS is a one to many broadcast and any device within range on the same channel will be able to hear and join your conversations. You may say, I don't want no one hearing my conversations. I read the box. This is they got their privacy channel. Okay, us those are also referred to as subchannels, and no, that's actually not the way it works. In fact, it's the opposite. There is no privacy with FRS. 
For example, if I set the radio to channel 13 sub 1 and I set the other radio to the same, they will hear each other, but they will not hear traffic broadcast on channel 13 from other radios. However, every radio on channel 13 will receive their broadcasts. It's the opposite of privacy. It's more like a nuisance filter. If you want secure comms, you have to buy secure radios and they are expensive. Another offered feature is priority channels. This allows the radio to scan one other channel for transmit. For example, you and your buddy are communicating on channel 13. You both set PRI to channel 1. Now, you and your buddy can transmit and receive each other on channel 13, but another party, say maybe an RSO at a range, transmitting on channel 1 will also be received by your headset, but you cannot transmit to channel 1. You can only receive. Reminder, you are on public channels and anyone with a shitty Walmart radio can find and hear you, and people smarter than me can probably triangulate your location. Yep, and there it goes. The sound is no problem. Now the walkie also has a Vox setting, which means that it activates hands-free when you talk, but I think it's reasonably useless on either setting. Low, it doesn't kick in soon enough, and even on high, you almost have to yell. Unusable marketing checkbox, big fail. Don't even have it there, I don't understand it. You may ask, what distance do these work at? Well, according to the documentation, one quick note, channels 1 through 7 and 15 through 22 should give greater range depending on conditions, as they operate at 2 watts compared to the 0.5 watts on channels 8 through 14. It really just depends on terrain, weather, building, trees, pretty much everything between you and the other radio. FRS can conceivably transmit 1 to 2 miles, but even half a mile is asking a lot of these. It's just a limitation of radio. But I did head out on my bike just to see how far I could go, and the answer was not that far. Can you hear me? the berm block the signals. Now, say you have some other kind of radios. Will they work? Um, the answer is kind of. You just need to run a 3.5 millimeter cable to the muffs auxiliary jack. Uh, I can hear, but I can't transmit, and I think it's just because I have the wrong cable. It's like that on other radios too, so I don't think it's a fault of the headset. Earlier I said I attached a set to my helmet, and I wanted to cover that as well, because it's one of the cooler things. Now keep in mind, they also have an around the neck version, but I have no idea if that works with a helmet. So you can non-destructively take these apart by lifting the rubber sheet on the inside and then removing the small four screws. Carefully pry out the wires and then just put the parts in a bin in case you decide to revert it back someday. For attachment, I ended up going with the OpsCore amp arms. They're 160 bucks. They attached to rails on my Hardhead Veterans Ballistic Helmet and I used the Unity Tactical Platform M-Lock adapters to do that, another 29 bucks. Originally, I had the Howard lights using the Axle Advanced Rack Link, another 76 bucks, but it doesn't fit these. So I used the connectors from the Rack Link and manufactured my own arms using Kydex, a heat gun, and a Dremel. I got it all from Amazon, so it's real easy. By using the heat and bending the ears on the Kydex, they have a tension lock that mounts to the pegs on either sides of the ear cup. It was really easy, and honestly, they've held up amazingly. Now, let's get to LARPing. The pros. Overall, a great option. Has all the features I want, and something that's much more cost-effective for comms than Sordens, Comtac, OpsCore, and the rest. The cons. Documentation. Trying to figure out how to use the features on these is not easy. In fact, I threw away my manual, and I figured, hey, I'll just download it from the website. Nope, not there. I reached out to customer service and they emailed me the manual, so that was cool. PRI channels are not even mentioned, so I reached back out. They said that's how you set channels to talk on the headsets, and I said, no, that's menu option one. I'm talking about menu item three, PRI. They replied back. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. They never replied back. I had to figure it out on my own using FCC docs that Walker filed. Retail cost of $250 with an actual out-the-door price of about $200. Oh, boy. This one really grinds my gears. The numbers and stats in the whole Hearing Pro game are made up. No one publishes the same standards, so we the consumer are never really sure. I want an apples to apples comparison. And finally, the rigid mic body. Why can't we adjust this a little bit? The Razor walkie talkie is really weak. This one's really strong. Why not just somewhere in the middle? Now, protecting your hearing is really important when you're shooting guns. So watch one of these videos to decide which gun to get next.